you know, before it used to be the main carousel video. And then all the way at the bottom, there was a video of, you know, influencer videos and customer videos, right? Now A plus content brings more video right to the kind of middle ground in between there. So again, Amazon's kind of indicating as you move down a listing page, we want to make sure that you're engaging with video content because it's, it just is so much more explanative than written text and photos and images can be right. Welcome fellow entrepreneurs to the Amazon sellers school podcast, where we talk about Amazon and how you can use it to build an e-commerce empire, a side hustle and anything in between. And now your host, Todd Welch. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Amazon Seller School. I am with my friend Justin Wilhite today. He's the CEO of ComQuest. And we're going to be diving into all the different cool things you can do with video. And he's been creating e-commerce videos for more than seven years, over seven years. And he's done over 2,000 videos just for brands on Amazon. So he's got a ton of experience in this space and he's going to tell us exactly what we need to do with videos and how you can increase your sales, increase your clicks, all of that great stuff. So Justin, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I'm excited to be here. This is awesome. Absolutely. Anything that I missed in your background that uh, people would like to know? No, I don't think so. I mean, outside of the my my ecom, I uh, you know for for Comquest and my ecom experience, I'm a influencer marketing manager globally for Twitch, which is a which is a uh, entertainment company. So influencer marketing, video production, that is just my absolute. That's my wheelhouse. That's the the space that I operate in twenty four seven. That's what I love to do. So I'm an influencer. I manage influencers. I kind of do it all, and all of it kind of comes back to video. So that's about it. Yeah. And, you know, we were talking before we jumped on the show that uh, Amazon is just putting video everywhere. So it's become one of those things that Amazon and they just partnered with TikTok, right? So they're, yeah. they're trying to do the whole social game. Maybe they'll end up buying TikTok, you know, with the forced sale and everything that's yep. supposedly coming. We'll see what happens there. But video is is definitely the future on Amazon and they're, they want a lot more video and that's what you guys do at ComQuest. So I guess, uh, where do we start with video? What, uh, what's the importance of video on Amazon and where are the most important places? Yeah. I mean, I think the, the first thing to look at is where is video on Amazon, right? Like I kind of get a definition of where it actually lives and exists. And there's a lot of places that Amazon and they've, they've been adding to it over the last couple of years. We've seen a, a lot of new places that video has arrived into. And so we've got, you've obviously got the video that's been around forever, which is the main carousel video. That's the main product video, the main listing page video. That's the video that when they come to your page and they flip through all your pictures, they're going to watch it and that's hopefully going to encourage them to be that's the interest building video that's the one that's like this is what you were looking for yes this is what you want right that's what that video is for then you've got your a plus content which is a new arrival with the whole a plus you know the a plus content kind of yeah, cool. you know revolution now that's built right in there so now you've got a big huge video right in the middle of your listing that kind of hits them as they're moving down you know before it used to be the main carousel video, and then all the way at the bottom there was a video of you know influencer videos and customer videos. Right now, A plus content brings more video right to the kind of middle ground in between there. So again, Amazon's kind of indicating as you move down a listing page, we want to make sure that you're engaging with video content because it's it just is so much more explanative than written text and photos and images can be, right? From there, you've got the Inspire vertical feed, which is, I mean, they literally put a separate button in the Amazon app for a whole different feed of content. And that is the Inspire feed. So that's their vertical feed. And then what you were talking about with TikTok, that's basically their first attempt to accomplish a TikTok style thing on Amazon, which I think we should dive in a little bit more because I think people may not really quite understand the value of the Inspire feed, but we'll, we can talk about that. From there, obviously, PPC ads. That's the name of the game if you're selling on Amazon, right? PPC ads. Then you got brand posts, which typically in the past have only been photos. We're starting to see people get access to video in those. Um, and then you've got Amazon live streams. So you've got like just there's so much place. There's so many places that video in Amazon coexists. And so when you look at that, anytime you see a company, especially the size of Amazon, 
making more and more features for one specific type of content, that's a huge indicator on what they think about it. So if they're making more places for video to be, you should be thinking about how do I capitalize on that because they're indicating that video is working. Yeah, and it's, you know, everybody is watching videos now on their phones and scrolling through social media. Yeah. You got QVC back in the day, which still exists. I don't know how many people watch that anymore, but QVC has basically moved onto Amazon in the Inspire posts and um, UGCs and everything else that we'll talk about. But it's basically become the the sales system on Amazon. I, I seen a really cool ad the other day where somebody had done a video ad and you're scrolling down and the video ad looked like it was a product inside of the Amazon feed and mm -hmm. it was a microphone and then the microphone like reached out into the, the product next to it. Yes, yeah, I've around. seen that one. Yeah. It was like yeah. so eye catching. I, I don't know how yep. long they're going to allow that kind of stuff. Yep. But uh, yeah, they're, they're putting video everywhere. So yeah. Yep. I think yep. most people, when they think of video on Amazon, they probably think of the, the main video that the mm -hmm. brand uploads in the carousel, which, which is a very important one. Uh, but there, like you just mentioned, there's a ton of other ones. So yep. which one uh, in your mind is the, the most important? Is it still that brand video or is it something else? Yeah. You know, I think there's actually kind of a, there, I, I think the carousel videos, in my opinion, you know, outside of obviously from a paid perspective, PPC ad videos, I think are obviously they're, they're, you know, you can't really, you, you got to get into that kind of stuff. If you're going to be doing PPC ads, I think that's critical, but from a, from an organic kind of eye catching thing, the, 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 the top carousel video, in my opinion, is still probably the most important because everything that you're doing outside of your Amazon listing, any, any marketing you're doing, any PPC ads you're doing, anything you're doing to drive content, you know, people to show up on your listing, that video has to be in place. Right. And, and it plays actually a bigger role than I think most people think. So what we're talking about again is that main video. So when people go there, they get the little play button in their video, in their, Im, you know, their image carousel. And that's the main video for that specific listing. And that is really important because what you'll find is if a brand doesn't upload a video like that, any other video. So you could have a brand for, let's say a water bottle, right? That's got like 10,000 reviews. You're selling like crazy down in the bottom. You've got like 50 influencer videos, right? So people are making content for it. If you haven't posted a brand video, right? All that extra content that influencers and customers and everyone has made for you is locked to the bottom carousel in the very bottom of your listing. The moment you upload a brand video, it pulls a video player and it puts it right in the top. So now when someone clicks your video, it's going to open another window and all along the side is all this other super powerful content that other people have made for you. And so if you're not posting a video at the top of your carousel day one, you're not capitalizing on all of that other video. You, you, you want to drag all that. You want to get as much video up to the top to early on in your listing as you possibly can. And so I think a lot of people, a lot of brands, a lot of agencies don't really pay attention to that. And so right now I'm working with a ton of clients and I go to their listing and they don't have any videos. They've got like six or seven influencer videos. And I'm like, man, like you guys are just, this is an anchor. It's at the very bottom. You've got to get people all the way down that, that page funnel right? Before they're going to see any, but of these influencers talk about how good your weightlifting materials are and stuff like that. And all that needs to be brought up. And it's as simple as just uploading a main product video. I was just going to say, do you see any rhyme or reason behind how Amazon decides which listings they're going to display some of the influencer videos in the carousel versus others they don't? It, there doesn't seem to be any pattern <laughs> that I can find. It's been a challenge. So I'll, I'll be honest with you. We're in, we're in a bunch of different groups with a bunch of other influencers, right? We have these closed groups where all these influencers talk about all the things that we're seeing and all the changes that Amazon's making and how we adjust to that and stuff. And that's one of the things I think that is the most, and, and there's a lot of very like mystical things on Amazon, right? There's, there's algorithms. Nobody knows anything about anything you don't know. You don't know, right? <laughs> Let's just put it that way, right? Amazon keeps it really tricky. And that's one of those things that, you know, there's, there's some definite things that you need to do to make sure that you get video. And one of the keys to it is making sure that you have brand video, your brand content yourself. 
if you're not creating brand content, that's when they start relegating that, you know, because ultimately it comes down to if there's influencer content and they're doing some kind of like other alternative influencer program, they may be suppressing videos for a period of time across an entire category. Your videos, however, still show up, right? When you post a video in a listing, that's your video. They're not going to take that down from you. They're not going to remove that from you, obviously, unless you're doing something wrong, right? But otherwise, it's, your video is going to stay there. So regardless of what else they're doing with influencer video or PPC ad video or any of those changes, your video is always going to be there. Any content that you upload will always be there. So that's why it's super important. And this actually leads me to kind of the second thing that I think is really important that a lot of people, a lot of brands aren't doing right now. So we talked about the main product video. A lot of brands now are starting to upload a second, sometimes even a third video of, on their own in their own carousel. And so what we've started doing is working with brands to not necessarily create an unboxing video from an influencer perspective. So it's not me going, hey, let's take a look at this water bottle, right? I actually make the video from the perspective of, hey, this is the XYZ water company, water bottle company. And today I want to show you our water bottle, show you exactly what you get in the box and show you how to use it properly. And we do basically what we call a branded unboxing video that the brand posts on their listing. So now when someone's shopping, and they see the videos, one, they're going to watch that cool video that's like, look at this water bottle and this guy running down the beach. and It's so pretty. The second video that's on there is the one that they're like, really helpful. Here's everything that comes in the box. Here's how you use it. They may come back after the purchase and be like, man, how do I get this stupid thing to lock on there properly? They can go back and watch your content that's made by you. And it sounds like it's coming from you as the brand. Mm -hmm. And having those two, I feel like are such a one-two punch when it comes to capturing and giving the, don't wait for influencers to tell people what comes in the box. Do you know what I'm saying? Like yep. you yep. should be leading that charge, but in a creative video produced way. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. And something too to keep in mind is that if you don't upload a video, you potentially give the opportunity for your competitor to sneak a video on your page as well, because they can take your product, unbox it with their product and do like a quick comparison video. And as long as they don't take talk bad about your product, they'll Amazon will put it up on your competitor's page, right? They will. Absolutely. That's something that we actually we we do videos like that. We call that complimentary product video strategy. Um, and we do that. We don't do it necessarily with competitive products. That's a little bit of a tricky space. We like to do it. We like to pair a brand product with other brands, other products that would be good for that person. So again, let's use the water bottle example. You know, we could get like a, a, a water additive powder as like a pre-workout, right? Like a little, you know, like a, a kind of a pre-workout and then maybe a, a sweat towel, make a combination video where we show all three of those products. And then, like you said, now that video lives on all three of those listings. So every time somebody shops one of those auxiliary listings, they will see your water bottle first. Now that, like you said, though, can work in reverse if you're not making and uh, not getting enough content on your listing, that kind of content can definitely slip in there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That, that's one thing that I thought was really cool with the UGC videos is being able to match it with different products, complementary, like you mm -hmm. said. So you mm -hmm. could potentially, if you got the water bottle and maybe you pair that with, oh, I don't know, a, um, um, what are those little things that you put your, the powder in for protein, those, uh, yeah. little containers, right? Maybe yeah. you mm -hmm. find one of those that's selling mm -hmm. like 10,000 a month and you're just launching your water bottle. You put it together and now your video potentially is showing up on that listing selling 10,000. The viewership on those videos is significantly higher because you're now not just relegating it to one channel. You're, you're giving it two, di two channels. So basically two, three listings are able to drive traffic potentially to that one video. So the exposure play on that one can sometimes be massive. Yep, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yep. So before we move off of the, the main video in the carousel that the brand's uploading, what have you seen that works the best in those videos for increasing conversions of a listing? Yeah. So, yeah. So I think the, the biggest stuff is, you know, obviously having, um, you know, we, we, we specialize in what we call UGC content. So ours, the video content that we produce across all of our video types and all the different types of video that we create is what we call UGC. And that has that user generated content feel. So we're not going to be doing these overproduced, this, you know, these really crazy lighting systems, you know, like seven cameras, full 3d renderings. We don't do any of that kind of stuff. What we're doing is we're showing the product. We're talking about it in a very organic way. We're speaking to the highlights of the product. We're showing it in 
in a in what you would expect to see a customer using it. So that's what people are looking for is when they go on TikTok and Instagram, they're looking for that UGC feel. What does this what does this real person actually say about this product, right? And so we're creating our video content to be produced but still have that feel and that like uh, that peer to peer kind of appeal to it. And so for us, we found that that style of content really works well because that's what people are seeking anyway, right? They're going, you know, the, if you've got, if you don't have video on your listing and they're really interested in your product, they're going to go over to YouTube. They're going to go over to TikTok and they're going to search your product name and they're going to look for someone that's in their house at their kitchen table saying, Hey, like, look at this cool product. Like, what do I think about this water bottle? Right. That's what they're already going to go look for. Why not have it for them now? Right. Like right. give it to them now and don't make them look for it. Don't be, you don't want them to leave Amazon. Amazon doesn't want them to leave Amazon. Right. They're right. shopping. They're on your page. Give them what they want to know and let them make an educated decision on if that's what they want. Right. And, and so that's what we bring to the table from a video production standpoint is we're trying to make the experience over on this platform arrive on Amazon. Yeah. 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 So, so you have your, your promotional video, your commercial style video, which, you know, consumers can see that that's what that is, obviously. But then that second and third video, you're saying to make that look like it's just someone who purchased the product, making the video, checking mm -hmm. it out and make it more, um, you know, just basic and user friendly, like it's generated by anybody. Yeah. I mean, when you really think about it, right, like you're going to and think about your own purchase, your own shopping, right? The first thing you're going to look for, you're going to, you're going to click the video and it's going to be like, whoa, look at this water bottle and it splashes and it does all this stuff and it's got all these features. And you're like, wow, this sounds really stinking cool, you know? Mm -hmm. And then you scroll down and you see a guy who's just like, let me show you, let me open this thing up and let me show you what you get, right? You get, you, cause you, I mean, most times you wouldn't know. And a lot of these water bottles, you, it comes with a straw. Well, they come with a straw cleaner, like one of those little like brushes, you know? I didn't know that was in there. That's super good to know. Now I can know, I know I can clean it. It comes with extra O-rings, right? That's what people want to know is like, that's great that you have a hype commercial. I can watch the Ford commercial a thousand times on the nightly news, but I'm not going to, until I get down to the dealership, am I going to know if I want it? You know what I mean? Like that was a cool yeah. video, right? It's the same thing. You've got to give them that feeling of like, what am I getting here? Like, and you know, is how, or how hard is it to put together? You, you're selling bikes on Amazon, Dude, those things are super complicated, right? Or maybe they're not. Maybe you've gone it's really far to make this a really easy thing to set up. Show them how to do it, right? Like just don't leave it up to the instruction manual because we all know everybody hates instruction manuals, right? Um, so like that's the kind of content that I think works really well. And when it's coming from the brand, I feel like that gives them a little bit more comfort knowing that, hey, the brand thought that I needed to know all this information. And that was super helpful. All right. I think this is the one I might get because the next one they go to or the one they just came from didn't offer anything like that. It was just a cool hype video, right? And they know nothing more about the product other than it's the right color and it looks kind of cool. Yours might be different because it says, this is why it's awesome. But then also, let me show you it like intimately and, and how to put it together and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Given, given them kind of that social proof that, uh, okay, somebody else opened this up. It's got everything that the video says that it does have, and it's good. Don't okay. make them go find it. Like, don't make you know, they're gonna. If, if, don't make them leave. Don't let them leave. Yep. <laughs> you, you, they're here. Keep them on the page. Keep them on the page. Have them by now. Like that's what we want. That's what everybody wants, right? And yeah. so, d make let's like make content that allows them to do that. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now you're uploading those in the actual video carousel as the brand. Are you also creating some of those and uploading them as an influencer? Yeah. So that's exactly what we do. So we, um, we are an Amazon influencer as well. So what that means is we're allowed to post videos also on our behalf from our channel in the areas that are not really designed for the brand. So Typically, what we'll do when we work with a client in this perspective, for example, is we'll help them make, you know, when they send us their product, we'll make a, you know, a cool, you know, with music and text call outs and make it kind of fun and everything. But still with that UGC, like, here's what it looks like. And this, the guy's walking down the street and he's drinking out of the water bottle, but it's like a real person, not mm -hmm. like the human specimen from TV, right? Like yep, this yep. is like a real dude, you know, like me, like I'm not the most attractive looking guy, but I'll drink out of your water bottle while I'm walking, you know? So we're going to put that in your main video. We're going to help you with that. Then we're going to make what we call a branded unboxing video, which is, which is exactly what I just said. It's going to be instead of like, let's check this cool 
water bottle out, the style of this video is let's check out our cool water bottle, right? Mm -hmm. Let me show you what you get. This is all the things that we include in the box. This is how simple it is. We've designed it to be, we've designed it. Like it's, so it's a video that's from you. You post those two on your listings. Now those live on your carousel. They come from the brand. That's all brand validity stuff, right? Yep. On the other side, then we're going to do an influencer video, right? And it's going to be me or somebody else on my team that's going to be like, hey guys, what's going on? Today we're checking out this awesome water bottle. So let's jump in and check it, you know, like that kind of thing. Then I'm going to do essentially kind of the same thing, right? With the water bottle, but it'll just be a secondary voice. It'll be from somebody else talking about the product. And that goes down in the lower carousel. But it also, because now you've posted video on your content, will show up in the upper carousel as a secondary video. So now you've got three pieces of content that are all the messaging is kind of the same. Everything's pointing to like, yep, this is the product you want. Now you understand how to use it. You know what's coming in the box and we're off to the races. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's important again, because you're filling in that space and controlling it so that somebody else isn't doing it for you because Amazon's probably going to put some kind of video there eventually. They, yeah, they will. So they'll fill, they'll fill, the, they'll fill the spot. Yeah, they'll fill the spot. Yeah, they love absolutely. to fill the spots. Yeah. So uh, after that, after the carousel things on the actual product page, uh, what would you say is the next most important videos to use? You know, if you're if you've been approved, because I, I now and correct me if I'm wrong, I believe A plus content is still on a, on approval basis. Am I correct? Yeah, some people okay. have it, some people don't. Yeah, so if you have A plus content. That's, I would say, is, is super important, well, the, right? You, the, the A plus content, everybody has it if they have their brand registered, but the yes, video part of it that's is, what is still. That's what I mean. So and, I would say if you have the video ability, that's going to be a huge one. Again, coming down that listing, you've got another shot to show them another piece of content. And that can be kind of another hype video. It can even just be the same video up in your carousel, maybe retool, just a little bit of a different look, things like that. But it's that that's going to be part of it. So I think that's another really important one. Obviously, I think, you know, uh, brand posts, I think is probably the other place that you can kind of start getting creative because we've been noticing that brand posts are starting to get thrown around a little bit more. You know, even if somebody doesn't follow your brand, if they've been on one of your pages, it starts to show up again. It's basically an algorithm of its own, right? So mm -hmm. if you've been to the, you know, I went to this water bottle listing and I checked it out and it seemed really cool, but I didn't get it today. They're going to try and remind that person like, hey, don't forget th this water bottle that you checked out, right? That's what Amazon's supposed to do. That's what they're good at, right? Like, let's get you to buy this thing. And so brand posts are really important. And like I was saying is up until recently, they were static images, right? You could post an image of your water bottle on a nice beautiful brick wall out by the by the sunny beach right like it was very static now you can start using video you can even start using influencer video as a branded content right there's all sorts of things that they're doing with that now so it's important to be utilizing those those places for that and then i think last but not least for sure is the inspire feed that vertical video placement is a really important one. We've been seeing a lot of traction lately, especially they've been, they seem to really be driving people to the Inspire feed a lot more because the video views that we've been seeing, we, we post a video, a run, a, a regular video, but then we post a vertical video. The amount of views that they're getting very quickly are, are much higher. It's really, really interesting to see that. And so I think that's another area that's really underutilized by brands because they, I think they wait for people to create content in that space. Yeah. Not knowing that they can work with somebody like us because we're an influencer, we can post right to it, right? And then we can kind of work with you in that capacity. So it's not completely, you know, you're not you have you have some ability to get your your content in there. You just got to work with the right people. Yeah, so it's only influencers that can post in the Inspire feed then. From what I can tell so far, it seems to be when you flick through it, it looks like it's mostly influencer content in the Inspire feed. It's really hard to tell like who actually posted the video directly, but it looks almost exclusively for influencers because again, what they were trying to do is they are kind of trying to emulate that TikTok shopping thing where you flip through, you know, and you kind of algorithmically get fed stuff that you've either bought before or searched before or looked at, or, you know, things that you've kind of spent time spending, uh, spent time looking at, they'll feed you more content around those specific items. So they definitely have gone towards that. Um, the beauty of it though, in comparison to like a TikTok, is that TikTok people are on there watching just 
They're just consuming content, right? They're not necessarily shopping. And so Amazon's trying to bridge that. So when an ad does get in front of someone that does trigger them to want to buy, they've tried to smooth out that process now, right? We saw that coming up. That's what you were talking about early right. on. But you have to always remember, people are just watching just stupid stuff. Like I go on there and I watch just dumb stuff. Then that's all I'm doing. I'm not shopping. I'm not, if I was shopping, I'd be on Amazon. Yep. The people watching the Inspire feed are in the Amazon app. They're already, their mind is already geared towards buying something. And yep. that's why it's important. You're, you're not, you're not going to see, you know, little clips of movies. You're not going to see stupid, funny videos. You're not going to see cat videos. You're not going to see chicken videos. You are going to see video that is designed for people shopping. And that's what it is. And so that's why I think the Inspire feed is so important. And so if somebody is an influencer, because you know you can register and try to register as an influencer, if you have a big enough social following, you can potentially get approved. So if you are an influencer, how do, how do you go about posting in the Inspire feed? Is that just a button in there that you click? And No, it's not even a button. You just have to create vertical content under, I think, under 60 seconds uh, in length. And it, it should autom it automatically becomes what the way they say it is automatically becomes eligible for the Inspire feed. And so basically, I have not YouTube seen shorts, YouTube shorts. Uh, yeah, basically, yeah. I haven't seen any of our videos that we've made that are vertical not go into the Inspire feed. We've, you know, we've seen the traction kind of take place. So I don't know. They, they say it's eligible. But then again, we also are up the rung a bit. There is a ranking system of influencers within the influencer program. And so we get all of the top, we get, we get all the placements that we can possibly get because of the amount of content that we create, but we get every single video that we make in that vertical space ends up getting into the Inspire feed. Okay. Yeah. yeah and that makes sense. Amazon's going to probably have a trust level based they, on they've, how you've submitted videos in the past. And yeah. They just actually re completely revamped that entire system. We like right. only a couple weeks ago, we just, we just learned our new ranking. So that just all came out. They got a whole new hierarchy system. Yeah. Oh, cool. So you can actually see your ranking. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. You, there's different nice. tiers. I forget what the tiers are. I just know that we're, we're platinum, uh, which is <laughs> We're platinum, yeah. uh, which is just, which is one is the top is the top level that you can reach. But then there's a whole series. I think there's like five tiers now that are, that are available for people to become. So yeah, we're platinum and I think there's five tiers. Let's see. Uh, you can continue on. I'll find the tiers and oh, bronze, silver, bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. So there's four tiers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I imagine that they've got the tiers for a reason. If you're platinum, your videos are probably getting more reach than someone who's bronze. Exactly. Yep. 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 Yeah, for exactly. Sure. Yep. Okay, cool. Yeah. And and in the Inspire feed, you can also do live streams into there, right? And into your posts as well. Or is it just posts that you do the live streams to? Amazon Live has its own area. And if you're working with an influencer, so for example, like if with us, because again, we are in that the upper echelon of, of the creator tiers, when we are talking about a product, our live stream actually shows up on your listing during that live stream. Yep. So okay. it, it actually like, they actually like, we take a really prominent spot so that if someone is shopping at that time, when we're doing that live stream, they actually see us talking about the product live, which is really cool. Cause we, I mean, we'll do sometimes we, we used to do a lot of lives and we'd have people come in and they'd be asking questions like, Hey, I'm, I'm thinking about buying this right now. Like, does it come with like X, Y, Z? And I'm like, grab the box. I'm like, yeah, look, see, it's right there. It comes with the thing, you know, and it's just, it's fun. You know, it's really cool. But they then are like, oh, cool. Thanks, man. And then off to the races, they bought it. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's, it's, it's pretty cool. But then those offline, those videos are offline available. They start showing up as content around Amazon as well. Those, those live streams are still out there. And then if you're working with, if you're working with those influencers that are doing that, it's very easy for them to be able to cut that piece of content out uh, and give that to you if you wanted them to, or work with work with them to be able to acquire, acquire that content if it was something that you found valuable and you wanted to use as maybe like a marketing asset or something on your website or or who knows. But yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Yeah, and you can also I've, I've seen do those live streams with pre recorded video, right? Using mm -hmm. um, um, an app. I think it starts with an O. I forget. OBS. Yeah. OBS. Yes. OBS. It's and it's a com it's a little more complicated, but yeah, yeah, definitely yeah. can. Yeah. yeah. OBS. I've used it. It's not that user friendly, but no, you could pre-record a whole bunch of videos and then set them to live stream at different times if you wanted to. 
you can do all sorts of stuff. I mean, at this point, there there are rules to, to to live streaming. You know, they have limits on how many videos you can have without having the product in hand. And there's all sorts of these. There's there's all sorts of limitations on it. But but yes, what a lot of people are doing now is they actually like, for example, we could utilize our entire bank of video that we've created on Amazon. And I would just act as a host where I would say, all right, guys, our next up product is going to be, you know, this beanbag chair you know, and so let's check it out. And then I would just hit play on the video inside of the live stream. And then you just watch the video that I created it. You, so you could basically would create like kind of like America's funniest home videos is what the way that I put it. You know what I'm saying? Like, do you remember that show where it was like, there's just one guy and he's like, and let's watch this kid fall off a, you know, a, a, something you know and and he turns around and there's the video and that's it you know and like that's basically what you can do so you can use pre-existing content that you've already created or worked with an influencer to create things like that so yeah there's a lot of opportunity you don't have to be like a live stream guy like you know you can you can rely on existing content to kind of get your message across but there does need to be somebody there managing it yeah, and you're not supposed to reuse videos. So once you live stream it once, you sh- you're not supposed to you know come back the no, next week and they, live stream the same videos again. They're very they're yep they got all sorts of rules. Like I said, it's it's Amazon. They still a lot of a lot of opportunity, but a lot of rules. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, I mean, it's important to do those kind of videos because, like you said, the live stream you're going to get people checking those out, maybe answering asking questions if you're actually doing it mm-hmm. live that you can answer right there. If you're pre-recording it, then obviously you're probably not there to uh, answer questions and stuff, or maybe you are just sitting there at the keyboard to see if anybody asks questions. But yeah, that's what I do. I like to be when I when we do live. I like to be there. It's a lot of fun. I really enjoy that whole process. I, I mean, I come from a live streaming background. I work at Twitch, right? So live streaming is 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 a lot of fun. So, but it's it does. Re- but to have that engagement, it does require that you're live and somebody is like shopping for that product at that moment. Right. Yes. It, so yeah. there's some there's some kind of random chance there as well. Yeah. But if, if yeah. you have a product that's selling, you know, a few thousand a month, you're, the odds are pretty good that somebody's going to be shopping and during that. The time. odds are pretty good. And then you and then you get smart and you start, OK, I'd like you to stream from this time to this time. PST, EST. Right. Because I know when people are shopping for my product and buying it, like because, you know, your data when when was a purchase made. Yeah. You know, so you can start getting creative and start getting your marketing hat on and 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 do that and line it up a little bit um, to help out for sure. Or if you're a bigger brand and you've got a social presence of your own for the brand, that's another great thing is to work that stream with a with an influencer into a marketing push. So you would say like, hey, you're going to go live on this day. We're going to two days before that, we're going to tweet about it. We're going to make posts about it. We're going to send out a newsletter about it. Like, you know, help them be successful when you're working with them, I think is also really important. Yeah. Yeah. And you could use your, your ads data, right. To see when people are clicking on your ads the most and do the live at those times and get somebody to line up and yeah, get up and do it, you know, five, you know, seven o'clock in the evening on Eastern time, please. You know, that's when, that's when all of the people that typically buy this product are live. Yeah. Are online. Uh, And the good thing, like you said, uh, once the live is done, it's not like it disappears. It goes in your posts and it's, Mm -hmm. it's in Amazon's ecosystem. It can show up at any time for people who are shopping for your product. Yeah, and we could download it as a, you know as the influencer or the person running the stream, we could download that entire video stream uh, and then like you know we are obviously we're a video editing company so we could then turn around and edit it up and turn it into a cool little segment that you could then use for other things. So there's a million different uses for video. Yeah. Yeah, and I I've, something I just thought of, I've heard of brands, you know, they'll do campaigns with say influencers on TikTok and give away their product in exchange for them creating videos. And they, so they get a bunch of videos and then you see which ones take off the most. Ask if you can buy the license to it, you know, for usually you can get it pretty cheap for the smaller influencers and stuff. And then you can reuse that content on Amazon in ads on TikTok, ads on Amazon, whatever the case may be. Absolutely. No, that's another great way. And and that's, that's branching. Now we're branching, I think a little bit into the, into the, how to use it, how to utilize influencers a little bit. But yep. um, that's one of the things I, and I, and I don't want to go too far off base into that realm because it's a whole other podcast episode, yep. but it really, when you're working with an influencer, if you're doing that type of promotion where you're working with an influencer, you're sending a product, they're making a piece of content. Yes acquire the rights, find a way to build out that deal to where you get the rights to use that content. Because when it comes to social content and the ROI on that, right, 
any influencer marketer will tell you you're probably going to come out at a loss from a from a direct sales impact you know like if you're buying you know if you're paying them to, to the, the odds that you're going to overcome the cost of the influencer even if it's really small just mm-hmm. in sales is not going to probably happen often right yep. you so you need to maximize your ROI getting the rights to the content is huge right because and then actually that now here's the other here's the other caveat to that we work with a lot of brands that we because we give rights to all of the video pr- that we produce I've been, I think, contacted maybe twice for us to then reutilize that content again, right? They all have the rights, but they never use the content. Mm -hmm. Use the content. If you have the rights to content, find an editor and just say, hey, make me 10 different, turn this into 10 different shorts that I can then just post wherever, right? Make sure you're getting the most value that you can. Most brands and agencies get the rights to this stuff and never end up using the rights. And it's a huge waste on their part, in my opinion. Yes. Yes. Repurpose your videos over and over. Yep. Cut them, splice them, do whatever. Reuse that content. You paid for it, or at least somebody made it. You made it. You took the time to do it. And we pack, I mean, we go as far as packaging, not just the final versions. We give you all of the unedited video that we use to make our videos. <laughs> So like you have all the raw video, you can make a hundred thousand different variants of this video with the resources that we provide to you. And, and, and nobody does. In fact, we actually offer to re edit. Like if people want to do stuff, we have a very, like, that's, that's something we'll do for you. It's, it's something that I think is necessary, but people just, uh, people just don't do it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It's an important thing to do for it sure. Is. And what about, uh, I think the one thing that we haven't uh, touched on fully yet is uh, video ads. Mm-hmm. Uh, where are you guys seeing the the biggest bang for your buck in that space? You know, video ads is a is a cool thing. the The nice thing is, you know, I, I'm not I will I will not I will not pretend to be a PPC specialist because that's a completely different. That's a whole other whole other group of people. We just make the content for them. But the, you know, we we do a lot of PPC content, and one of the things that I think is really important about PPC the the PPC ads themselves is one they go really really well in the A plus content spot. Uh, that's what a lot of brands have done is we're like, Hey, we'll make this PPC ad video. We do, they use it for their PPC ads, but then they get a plus the a plus video section. And it just fits in there. Cause it's, it's a short video. It's got music. It's got text call outs. It's, it's kind of made for that. So that's a really yeah. good use for that type of video. And then, you know, really it just comes down to, you know, we, we just, we find a lot of value in it because we're already creating multiple different ad, you know, video assets. And so creating one more in just a different style with a little bit more impact, a little bit more excitement is just really easy for us to do. And brands just find a lot of value in it because it just makes it again, especially if you're launching a brand new listing, having a PPC ad like right then and there, just day one, you know, you can just run with it if you want to makes it really simple. But ultimately, I think what it is with the PPC ad videos is it comes down to just really good B-roll, right? Because that's what they mostly are is there's like music, there's text call outs, there's nobody really talking in them. It's mostly just show the product. It's product, 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 product. Show them everything that you can about the product in that short little window that you have them. Because again, these do show up as ads, right? They show up as sponsored on Amazon. So people know it's an ad. So you want it to be exciting. You want it to be like engaging and, you know, give them a lot of information visually really quickly. And so that's kind of what we focus on when we're making those. Yeah. And and so obviously those video ads are playing as people are scrolling through the the search results. So are you doing anything on the front end of those videos to try to grab people's attention and get them to, you know, stop and actually look at the ad? The first frame is your big, is your big winner there, right? So like you want to have like uh, just the, the image of your product that you want to be the stopper, right? And so like for us, what we try and do is we try and find our our most impactful shot that we took in that B-roll. And that's what we open the video with. If that's like a cool lighting, slow pan out of the water bottle, right? Back to the water bottle, but like that kind of thing. Or if it's like somebody, you know, like in the sun drinking and there's like a lens flare from the sun behind him, you know, like that's the, that's the mo- that, that should be your opening shot. Even if it's only like two seconds, that's what they're going to see right when they scroll, right when that video hits play, that's what's going to try and stop them from moving down farther down the page. And so the, the nice thing is that Amazon does a really good job about it. Obviously, these ads are showing up contextually. So you're not going to be searching for basketballs and see a water bottle ad necessarily, right? Mm-hmm. If you're searching water bottles, that's when you'll see a water bottle ad. But you just want to have that that 
that spot that's like, boom, like here's ours really quick. And everyone's like, oh, whoa, because otherwise it's all they're going to be scrolling through images, 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 images. And then this comes up and it's like, whoa, you know, like lava spewing out of a, you know, water bottle straw or something. You know what I mean? Like whatever that happens to be, that's what's going to catch their eye. And hopefully then the rest of the video does its magic and pulls them in. Yep. Yeah. I I feel like in the first couple seconds, having like some flashes of different colors and it's the the first frame man the first frame is the breaks that's what that's what gets people to stop and then what you do right after that is the next phase so yeah like if you were going to do something like that if you've got multiple colors like a rainbow of colors like Mm -hmm. yeah have some kind of thing that shows a bunch of them because like you may open up with like a blue bottle but like, you know, like I'm I'm shopping for green today, man. Like, do you have a green one? I don't want to go into the listing to find out, you know? Yeah. So, and, you know, like that's, you do want to make sure that you're hitting them with what could possibly be different than anybody else. Yeah. Yep. For yeah. sure. Yeah. All right. Cool. Anything else uh, video wise that we haven't touched on? Any other placements? Man, no, I think we covered them all. I, you know, we kind of went through the whole gamut of them again, you know, the A plus content vertical, you got the brand posts. No, I think we literally covered all the areas that, that video primarily is impactful at this point on Amazon, but until tomorrow no. they'll release a new. Uh, new yeah, product. yeah, exactly. But I, again, I think make sure you guys look at that as, as, the, as, as indication, right. You know, like, I think one of the, the funny things when you look at it is they just went through and made everybody change their descriptions right? Like get rid of all the little, you can't put emojis in there anymore and you can't Mm -hmm. do this and you can't do that. Like they pulled back from that. You know what I mean? Like that's like a detractor of being able to differentiate your product a little bit. Video is like, here's another video feature. Here's another video feature. Oh, the only other last thing is creator connections. That's another one. That's the only other one because creator connection plays into all of this because creator connections, if you don't know what creator connections is, this is an influencer-based um, feature for, for influencers. Basically, Amazon has created Creator Connections, which is a, a, an, in, an on-Amazon platform where you as a brand can say, hey, I'm going to run a promotion for my water bottle, and I'm going to put $10,000 into a bank. And every time one of these influencers can, can track a sale, regardless of where it's coming from, and so what they mean by that is like, you can, they, you know, you, they would put in the content that they created for this. So if they created a TikTok video, a YouTube video, an Instagram video, they would, you get a special link from the creator connections campaign that they would put in all of those places. If they convert through this influencer, you know, this, this creator connections campaign, you would say then as the brand, I'm going to give you a 15% commission. 20% commission, 10% yep. commission. You get to set the commission rate because right now, and again, what we talked about offline is that Amazon's done a lot of changes to the percentages that creators are getting when they get affiliate sales. They're really, they're getting lower and lower all the time. And this is your opportunity to say, hey, now if you sold this water bottle, typically you'd only get 2.5%. But if you do it through my creator connections campaign, if you just convert a sale, I'll give you 15% right? And that bank of money that you put in there. So it's very, very intriguing to influencers right now. Creators are all over this. It's very, very beneficial. It helps them, you know, overcome some of the squeeze that they've been feeling in the marketplace. You get more content in exchange, right? It just, it, it's a win-win. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. So it's essentially like an influencer connection platform. And I'm putting up a post that says, Hey, I'll give you 10% if you market my product essentially. Yep. And I'm not having to give you a, a free pot not, product, am I? Or not not like that, unless right? you want to. So they give you the option to provide samples. It's really cool. They actually, inside this platform, they give you the ability to provide samples. They actually give you a chat. So you can actually communicate directly with the influencer right through their pro, their whole platform and everything. It's a very, it's a really cool system. So basically you, you would just go on there. You'd say, I got, you know, $5,000. I want to put in here. I need this many influencers, you know, pieces of content. I'm going to give this percentage. And then you can put multiple ASINs in there too. So you could say like, you know, I've, I've got 15 different variants. Here's all the variants. You can choose which one. So then they can go buy a purple one or a pink one and make a video for it. And then they can get commissions on that and stuff. And so yeah. it's, it's pretty slick. That's pretty cool because if you're building a real brand, you're doing that kind of thing anyways, either on one of these outside influencer connection websites that are out there, or you're going direct and trying to talk with influencers and getting them to do this. 
and so that's if hard. You're just able to post it, and Amazon uses the power that is Amazon to connect you with influencers. That could be pretty beneficial. Well, you don't have to manage. Like if you go to an outsourced third-party influencer company, now you've got to manage that relationship and work with them. And like that's just more time that you're going to have to figure out how to do that whole thing and what works and what doesn't work. If you're trying to reach out to creators themselves, mm -hmm. I do it every day, all day. Trust me, I know. It's a very difficult business to be in. Yep. This is just, it's in your ecosystem already. Like you're, it's already in Amazon. They will create all the affiliate links. They'll do all the tracking. They'll divert all the payments for you. You don't even have to pay. It's all, it's a one-stop shop for you to be able to access influencers in a much more tangible way. Now, is there a way to set limits in there? Like, or, or is this once an influencer picks it up, they're getting 10% in perpetuity for as no. long as that video is there? The budget, the budget's the budget. And okay, the date's so the date. Budget. So you can put a date range. You can say this campaign is going to run for this entire month. And I'm only going to spend up to this much. This it's got, got this it. campaign has 5,000 bucks. So if that 5,000 bucks goes in 24 hours, then it's gone. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. If it so doesn't, if it doesn't go until that's gone, but then those the videos remain there. Right. And the influencer just drops down to whatever Amazon's giving them paying on our exactly. behalf. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. All right. So exactly. That, that's a way too to just kickstart those videos then. It's a great way to launch a product. It's a great way. I mean, you get, especially if you get really aggressive with the, you know, like, Hey, I'm going to put $5,000 towards this and I'm going to put 50% commission on this. Like I'm just trying to get content made. You can incentivize and not have to put, you don't have to pay anything out necessarily up front. That's you know cool. what I mean? Like let the influencers decide that yours is a worthy bet and then they go do it themselves. It's great. Yep. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, yeah, I could definitely see the benefit of that. It's another way that Amazon is on sucking some money from us. But I mean, it's it's one of those things you're probably doing anyways if you're building a brand. Exactly. And if this makes it easier for you to do that and and not have to manage all this stuff and figure it all out, because again, I'm an influencer marketing manager. I have a full career in doing that. <laughs> People that are selling on Amazon are doing 50 other things. You know what I mean? Like, so this allows you to still dabble in that space without having to go full bore, or hire somebody new or do all that kind of stuff. You can really manage it on a much lower impact model and still drive some results. Cool. Cool. Yeah. I like it. That's a golden nugget, I think, right there. I think most so. People probably don't know that even exists yet. Yeah. Look up creator connections is what it's called. It's pretty cool. For sure. Yeah. All right, Justin. So if people want to reach out to you and uh, get some videos made, what's the best way for them to do that? They can find me on LinkedIn, just Justin Wilhite on LinkedIn. You'll find me there. You'll see our logo and the whole thing. Um, you can DM me there or you can email me, which is jdub, J-D-U-B-B at comquest.io. You can reach out and we're happy to do, uh, we do free audits. So if you're like, hey, like, check out this ASIN. Tell me what you think about my listing. Like what, where am I missing on video? I'd happy to tell you what we think that you could do better with video. And we do that for free. That's just something that we do and give you just something to put in your pocket and you can go anywhere else you want and find people to make the video. Or if you want to make the video, we do all that stuff as well. Cool. Yeah. yeah and full disclosure, I used you guys to create some videos for yes. one of the brands that we partnered with and they yep. turned out great. So yep. I would definitely uh, recommend people use you guys if they want to have someone else create the videos for them. I appreciate that. Yeah. But yeah, it's great. It's a lot of fun. I love making the content. So reach out any questions. If you have any questions about anything we talked about, any of the video types, um, I'd love to love to set up a time and meet with you. Awesome, Justin. This has been fantastic. I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you having me. Thank you so much. Have a great one. You too. This has been another episode of the Amazon Seller School Podcast. Thanks for listening, fellow Amazon seller. And always remember, success is yours if you take it.